Hi, I'm Maribel Herrera, and coming up on Coronado TV, I'm going to show you guys how to make this beautiful centerpiece for your home. I'm Maribel Herrera, as some of you may know or have taken classes with me in the past. Um, I'm a floral instructor and designer, and today we're going to talk about making a holiday centerpiece from things that you can make that you get from the grocery store. I know right now because of COVID in 2020 and everything we're experiencing right now, things aren't at our fingertips the way that they were before. A lot of us are doing um, ordering our groceries through apps, online, all that great stuff. So I wanted to show you guys a way that you can order your stuff on your app, pick up a plant from a grocery store, utilize it and create something beautiful for your home because we're still going to celebrate a holiday regardless of whatever's going on and you're in your home so might as well make it nice and festive and beautiful so today we're gonna stick to neutral tones I was inspired to do something with all whites but then I wanted to bring in a little bit of a color combination of a pop of something frosty so a little bit um, not your traditional route usually when we're doing something traditional we're looking at reds greens golds that's usually the whole Christmas kind of feel but I wanted to do something a little bit more neutral and just a different play on things so what we're gonna start off with um, with some of you that have taken my classes with me before and I miss you guys so much but I'm so happy to be here now to do something for you guys um, we're going to start off with a natural basket kind of container so you can kind of see here that it's just a bark container so it's just something that I picked up from um, a craft store a Michaels a Joanne something like that even a Target or a Walmart whatever you have laying around the house doesn't even have to be anything crazy or over the top and of course online shopping is always fun too so you can pick out something that way too so what I did here I lined just to show you guys how we're going to utilize everything we got going on at home I lined my container with a grocery store bag I went to Sprouts had my groceries got my groceries I lined it with a grocery store bag so we're utilizing everything that we have at home because it's COVID time um, from there, we have a piece of Oasis. As some of you may know, Oasis contains your water. That's what absorbs your water. That's what's going to hold the foundation of everything we have going on. And I wanted to use Oasis so we could do a few simple insertions, nothing too complex or too tricky because we don't want to make this too tricky. So what we're going to start off with is some white hydrangea. Um, usually hydrangea comes in a pack of three to five, so you can get that at your grocery store, get that at even a flower shop, anything like that. We're cutting off, as you can see, I basically did a quarter of my hydrangea, so we're getting rid of that stem. I'm going to come in on my right side and insert firmly. So we have one puff of hydrangea going on. When we're designing with um, flowers, me personally, I like to design with odd numbers. So we're going to design with three. We're going to kind of do a three look today three, five, seven, nine, that kind of thing. We're going to see when we get into the roses how we have a little bit more going on. So then I'm going to come over back on our opposite side, our left side, and we now have two puffs. So we kind of have two little puffs going on. And we're going to grab our third one, just snip it off. And traditionally, I like to use a knife, but we're not going to use a knife today because we're going to go a little bit slower. So we have a pair of cutting shears. Again, you can pick these up from a local craft store, a floral shop, anything like that. We're going to get our third guy and what I'm going to do is place him more towards the front. We want to give it more of a focal look so when we put this arrangement on our table or our side table or wherever it is, maybe even in our bedroom just to enjoy it while we're sleeping at night, just so it has more of a front facing kind of look and we're going to use some cedar later on to fill everything out. So Snowflake wants to come with me. What we're going to do next, we have some really pretty these are called quicksand roses 
as you can kind of see inside of the rose, it's a creamy two-tone tan rose. So it's not your traditional clean white, and it adds another depth, another element, and another color composition to go along with um, our little neutral flower arrangement. And it picks up the color tone of the basket really well too. So that's, we want everything to harmonize and flow really well. So I'm gonna begin with three roses, and we're gonna start in our front. We're gonna do one, we're clustering these guys together so we give more of a dramatic statement piece when we see them all together in one area our eye is attracted to that um, if we were to scatter them it'd be a little bit more not as consistent and not as the clean simple kind of elegant look that we're going for so I'm going to grab another three roses I'm going to give them all because I know my length of what I'm working with so I'm giving them all a chop what I like to do sometimes too with these guys as a fun trick is Try to open them up a little bit more and they open up in such a pretty way that just gives another element of surprise. Sometimes our little roses aren't the prettiest petal, so I just take it off. We take off a rose or petal or two. Then again, I'm gonna come in my front and bring in another cluster of three roses. And as you can see, what a difference this makes in comparison to these guys but it's two very different elements and it's bringing in a different feel so i'm going to bring one of my open ones over on this side as well so that we can have some consistency going on so i'm going to grab another three i have about 24 roses over here um, you can go as heavy or as light-handed as you'd like to our objective though is to cover up this oasis that we have going on we don't want anyone to see any of that. As you can see towards the back, we still have oasis showing. So I'm gonna come back here and put some roses back here now so we can cover up that space. And I'm still opening them up a little bit just to add that extra holiday magic to everything. So this will happen to you. You'll get a poor cracked rose or you'll break a rose and that's okay what i like to do with these guys sometimes when i have leftovers i'll literally feel like a little bowl and just float them inside of something so you can still have a little pretty something something going on so we like to use everything that we have so i got another one we're gonna fill that guy in right there i'm still going to continue with my roses i'm going to try to do a few more because I want this to look extra beautiful and extra full and extra gorgeous because this is going into my home where I live, where I have had to quarantine, where I have had to go through everything. So I want to celebrate this holiday by making myself something nice and beautiful as everyone else should, or I feel that way at least. But then again, I feel like you should have flowers for yourself all the time because why not treat yourself all the time? So doing another, two, I'm going to do another two on this side. So as you can see, we have two over here and two going on here. Three over here, three over here, three over here. So we have consistency. As we have something three in the front, we have three in the back. As we have two on the side, we have two on the side. So I have this kind of four cluster going on over here. I'm going to add one more rose down here just so that we have the same swoop of flow. So we're going to throw that guy right down low. So you can kind of see that we have just created a nice, round, pretty shape. We have this tan tone that's really bouncing off of our brown basket, but we need to bring in more of that holiday feeling, more of that, that smell, the smell of Christmas, right? So I chose to do some cedar. Cedar has the most beautiful, delicious smell. This smell is like, it's just Christmas. Cedar and pine is just Christmas. How could you not want to smell that? I don't know what's wrong with you if you don't want to smell that, but... With the cedar, as you can tell, comes in big bulky branches. They're pretty big, they're pretty tough, so you're gonna need those cutters to really get in between there and cut in between our cedar to create more branches, to create more of what, of just one giant branch. We don't wanna get our one giant branch and put it in there. It's not gonna be balanced, it's not gonna harmonize, it's gonna look like you have a Christmas tree hanging out of your arrangement. We don't wanna do that. So we're cutting them up into little Christmas trees. So I'm gonna begin by putting one piece towards my front and you can already see what a flow it's already giving to us it's already giving us the gift of something different of another texture i'm going to bring in another piece on the other side how i'm talking about balance so we have something coming this way we're going to do the same exact thing that way we want to create that line work so these little trees that i cut up just placing them around 
that guy's a little wild so we'll go for something less and then each little piece of cedar is a little different a little unique so you kind of want to take a look at what you have going on and see maybe this is a chunkier piece so we want to put this chunkier piece towards our back fill up some space back there we know we have something that's more delicate going on this is like prettier and flowier so we're going to utilize it in our front so that you your family your kids your cat whoever it may be that you have in the house quarantining with you um, can enjoy this front view so i'm going to grab little pieces you can see that these guys are little pieces and i'm going to start tossing them in between just to bring in more texture more flow more harmony you can see we're getting more of that green consistency going on I'm going to throw in another big piece just to add some drama because sometimes we need a little drama in our lives but the good kind of drama like floral drama not family drama so you can see that we have a flow going on we have all this greenery going on I'm still going to keep utilizing some pieces and you can see that we're making this arrangement it's building and building and building more you can also see too we just threw in a different height variation so we have something taller going on that when our beautiful orchid comes in it's going to help it this is going to help support that orchid because you're probably look, looking over here like what are we going to do with that guy that's going to be our finishing touch so from there we have our cedar, our hydrangea, our quicksand roses. We have a nice neutral tone going on. This alone could be something gorgeous and beautiful, and you could put it somewhere in your home, and you'd be, we'd all be happy. I would be happy to receive something like this. But just because we want to add in more of those holiday elements and bring in more feelings, um, I'm going to add in one more texture of some mums. Again, these are all flowers that you can pick up bunches of from the grocery store order online and have them delivered to you um, obviously i personally enjoy going and picking them out myself to make sure that nothing's dead to make sure that everything is as fresh as possible but right now during covid it's a little bit different sometimes we have to trust the process of somebody else handling things which i don't always like to do but we, we you know it's a it's a new time a new year we have to trust something a little different right so as you can see, we put one mum over in this section. We're gonna cluster one more towards our front. And again, we're working in how I said the odd numbers, threes, five, seven, nine. We're gonna throw one more over here so that we have something in every which way. And again, we're bringing in another height. So this is another height that's gonna play in good with this. So as you can see, we're building and we're building up to create all of that texture, all that harmony, different lengths. Um, you can kind of see over here too, we have some little snowflakes that we're gonna add in and I have some ornaments that I'm gonna add in. So with that being said, we'll start off with these guys. So I have a little, it's like a little wooden pick with a little wire on it. We utilize this wire to tie things onto things. You can use a pipe cleaner you can use some twine. Again, it's COVID time, so use whatever you have going on in the house. So what I'm gonna do with these guys is I have a little bling, and as you can tell, kind of my nails are inspired by them. So we're going to kind of like stringing like a needle or stringing popcorn for your tree, that old traditional feeling. We're gonna put in one If I can see two and one more okay and we're gonna do it again our odd numbers are clusters of threes and three so you can kind of see how I have one side and I have my pick combine it together give it a twirl so we can get it to catch on with each other it's nice and tight with each other and then grab my wire and I'm gonna twirl this guy around my little wooden stick so now we have a pretty little cluster of these sparkly powder blue uh, christmas ornaments so what we're going to do is we're going to stop and we're going to kind of look back and take a look around at what we got going on with this arrangement and i'm going to say that where do i see kind of more of my hydrangea being exposed i see over here in my right hand side a good little cluster i don't want to put this on top of my roses our roses are our little stars, so we don't want to cover them. Our hydrangea is helping us out. So we're just going to help it out as well and put this little cluster right on top. So you can see this brings in 
a whole different dimension, a whole different element, and another little pretty vibrant pop of color. Of course, if you're not a crazy Christmas kind of person, you could always go for something non-traditional. You could go for purples, you could go for lime green, you could do pink. I've done tons of pink Christmas trees, which is very, very fun. So just a couple things to consider that we started off with neutral and you can just add in that element that's for you, that's especially for you. We have some cute little snowflakes. What I wanted to do with these guys is just start placing a couple of them. It's an ornament. I'm gonna yank off the, the little tag and even the little wire that comes along with it. And I'm just gonna place some of these guys in between because we're adding a different little element in between. And you can kind of see how the sparkle picks up as well too. The sparkle is all pretty with the, these ornaments over here as well. So I'm kind of just tossing them, using my flowers to support it. I'm not wiring them, I'm not picking them. We don't have to necessarily go down that route with them. I'm gonna use two more so that we can have a total of five. I'm just literally with force, just taking off those little fish strings. Two. And we have one, two, three, four, and our fifth one. I'm gonna put our fifth one. Let's see where I have some space. Put them back here. Put them towards our back. Something shiny back there. So as you can see, where we started from, we started from absolutely nothing, and we have built our way up. Um, but we're not done yet because we need a couple more finishing touches. So as you can, I was talking about that neutral look. I have a nice, pretty, kind of gold burlapy material ribbon. And as well, because I'm a sparkle girl, I have something silvery, neutral, but with some snowflakes. Let's keep our snowflakes consistent here. If we have a couple snowflakes going on, let's give it another pattern. So what I'm gonna do with these two guys is you can see that this one is a little bit wider of a ribbon. This one's a little bit thinner. I'm gonna lap them on top of each other. We're gonna give this another texture, another, another look. I'm gonna create a tail to begin with. I'm gonna get them even with each other. Give them a cut at an angle with my cutting shears. And we're going to begin the process by making a very simple bow. I'm giving it a twist and creating a loop. So I have one loop. And you can still see that my tail is facing forward with my right hand, my dominant hand. I'm giving it a spin. I'm gonna create one more loop. So again, under. One more little loopy. And we have ourselves a nice, pretty little shoe tie. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna leave one of my tails a little bit longer and you're gonna see why. Even though it looks uneven and doesn't look balanced, but you're gonna see why right now. I'm just gonna put these guys off to the side with the crazy mess that I made. But if you're not making a mess and that didn't mean you made anything. So, again, another wooden pick with the wire. My fingers are using this to keep it together, to keep it closed. My little fingers are supporting this. It's all the pressure on them right now because I got to keep this together to make this bow look pretty. So underneath goes my wire. Again, the same concept of how we did our ornaments, how we strung them. And together we go. We're giving it a twirl. So we have it nice and captured together. Again, the wire goes around the wooden stick, the pick. Twist, 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 up. And now we have it nice and supported. So you're kind of looking at this bow and you're like, what's gonna happen to the bow? It's not looking too pretty, right? It's not fluffy yet. With our finger, we just come in between our little bow loops and we're just gonna widen them up and we're gonna open them up. We're gonna have them shine. We're gonna have them blossom open. And you can kind of see how we created this two-tone look of something very pretty and natural that plays into the roses, brings in the element of the basket that we used that I selected for this arrangement. Then we're gonna keep this guy long. So what we're gonna do from here, I'm gonna utilize this bow towards my front because I want him to show off. I want him to look pretty in the front. With my longer tail that I have going on here, we're gonna cascade him to the back. Doesn't wanna stay in, doesn't want to accept its new home yet. We're gonna cascade our second little tail to the back. So I just tucked it in a little bit just to give another flow, another composition, another little looping, give that holiday feeling of tousled and pretty ribbon. 
So you can kind of see now how all of the color combinations coming together. So we have a little bit of sparkle, we have a little bit of a matte material, natural elements like burlap and bark, but still bringing in a little bit of glam into this arrangement. So for our final finishing touch, as I was saying how everywhere right now, um, grocery stores have plants. You can utilize different plants. Um, there's always orchids, always, always. I always see orchids in the grocery store. And I just thought to myself, we have to use a fail. This is a fail, phalaenopsis orchid. These guys are super gorgeous, super beautiful when they're growing. They're not all the way bloom like this. I selected one that's already at its full potential because I want it to look gorgeous in our arrangement. So I'm going to give it a cut. Also, what you can do with these guys is replant them and grow more orchids. So that's always fun too. So you can just use your little shoot of everything and keep it going again. So what I'm going to do with this guy is bring him just like the same way we have the flow going on with the ribbon. I'm going to follow that as well. So I'm going to place him a little bit more back but still you can see that height. You can see that difference. It's not, this orchid's not gonna get lost in between the roses and everything else, but the cascade and the flow on it is just gonna bring in a whole new life and a whole new element and a whole new living organism, might I say, because it was just a plant. It wasn't a cut flower. Now it's a cut flower, but it was a plant. So even bringing in that energy into your arrangement is a totally beautiful feeling. But at the end of it all, all that matters is that you created something for your home, you made something beautiful, and you get to celebrate your holidays, whichever which way, shape, or form you choose to, but that you're safe at home. And that's all that matters. So I just wanted to share a little bit of holiday magic with you and create something with you guys and tell you guys that I miss you. I've thought of you guys this whole year, and I'm hoping and praying that next year is a brand new year of opportunities where I can see you again and teach you all in real life. Um, but other than that, happy holidays and thank you for having me.